Ah, uh, yes. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Veterans Minimum, the number one sports betting vibe on the fucking planet. I'm your host, Nick Dayus. All things me are at Nick Dayus 10. All things Veterans Minimum are at Veterans Minimum. As you see the nice graphic flying on the screen right now, make sure you're following the show everywhere. TikTok, Facebook, uh, YouTube, YouTube LinkedIn, Spotify, 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 Spotify follow, Apple. Leave a review. Google. Yeah. Google especially. Hell yeah. That'll do it. Everywhere. Everywhere. Shout out to everyone that listened to the show with Mozzie VS. Uh, got really good feedback on that. That's the dude that won the million dollar bet on the Kansas City Chiefs in week three. The first interview that he did, George, was with us. So shouts to him for coming on the show. Shouts to Gio for uh, making that connect. And also, while we're giving out shout outs, one of the reasons why I'm in a jersey right now, as you guys can see right over here, is uh, it's cool when you build a nice fan base. It's better when they send you free shit. I'm going to yeah, be honest. Gifts bro. are awesome, man. I mean, gifts are. I mean, if they're a part of the Discord, they've definitely. They have the funds. They we know do. that. Yeah. If that. Especially if they were listening to you in the Discord. Um, but the jersey looks fly. You yeah, know? man. Shouts to Celtic Greens never looked better on you. I know. This is wow. You just ruined it for me, bro. Now I'm I, be I know. I'm I know. Who is it actually? You know, <laughs> you know, I don't know any of these. But this is soccer teams, Nick. Yeah. Shouts to Diego, man. He's from Brazil. Uh, cannibal on uh, Ca Cabal. Sorry, Cabal on Instagram. Cannibal. Uh, he's easy. won. He's won a Latin Grammy. He's told me I got to come to Brazil. You know me, George. I'm trying to speed up this process of like finding a girl here in vegas passport bro nah not so much what i really want to do is i want to find the girl yeah kind of yeah, yeah, we'll be yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're fucking on, your country hopping right now yeah I, actually you know i'm a savant when it comes to <laughs> you, wait, traveling I'm, and finding i'm pussy. trying to figure out if he's saying he wants to find a girl in vegas to take her to brazil no 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 what i want to do is this i want to find a girl in vegas fake fall in love propose and like six to 12 weeks <laughs> have a bachelor party in brazil so i can find the love of my life that's my plan i'll do jujitsu with the locals i'll play soccer with the locals george you know i'm a stud athlete self-proclaimed according to you you're gonna here's how it's gonna happen he's gonna tear his acl playing in the oh come on, man. it's happened before relax gonna, no okay i was gonna <laughs> make it romantic juju, he's gonna tear his acl playing in the favela like this. And then you're going to the nurse that's taking care of you Hold on. is your wife. Hold on. George, George, not only not only did he tear your ACL, he tore your ACL in a foreign land. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're over For here getting love. foreign land uh ligaments thrown in. No, George, that is that is a that is a horrible, horrible place. Delete. <laughs> Delete. Disney, you're Delete. welcome. <laughs> Animate that shit. You'll make billions. But yo, that's really my plan, bro. I really want to find a girl here, get proposed, go to Brazil, and then I could find the love of my life. You know, there's a lot of screws loose, but at least I'm being transparent. And nowadays, you don't get that too often. So, shouts to Diego for sending the jersey. That's why we're wearing the jer jerseys. Uh, we got Josh Williams in the building. A uh, round of applause for Josh and his favorite team, the Commanders. How about them? Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm starting to like the name Commanders now. No, no, no. Oh. No, it's still, Are, still, still Redskins. Still Redskins. Let me okay. ask you this. Are you... How do you feel about them right now? Are you happy with what you're seeing? You know, Dan Quinn was my coach of the year pick 20 to 1. We did say on the preview show how if Daniel, Jaden Daniels comes in and can light it up, and this team is a worst to first candidate. They they have a lot of pieces I do like. Now, I do think they're gonna be in shootouts every game because the defense can can't stop a nosebleed. Like even the Bengals, we'll get to them a little later. They scored on every possession. Uh, there weren't the any well, points. <laughs> he missed a field goal, but yeah. outside of that, like Burrow led them to scoring drives every yeah. single time. So, how do you feel about the Commanders, bro? Uh, I, to your point, you know, what I mean, and when we did the uh, the the preview show last time I was here, um, I said that the Cowboys were going to backslide. Cowboys won the division last year. You know that no, there hasn't been a repeat division winner in our division 
since what 2004 i think it is somewhere in there um so the cowboys i felt like they were going to slide back i felt like the eagles were going to have some issues um we definitely have the opportunity george and i were talking about you know the next few games and um it's it's in front of us but you still got to go one week at a time especially the way that my team is we're so fragile you can't you can't look into the future yeah, you know I mean, it's it's not as <laughs> I've done. I've seen this. I've, this train is never late and you can't look past who we have. We've got Arizona this week. I'm going to the game. So, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see. We'll, we're going to see what we got. You're going to be witnessing a shootout, in my opinion. I pray not You're going to take the over. No, no. I Look, I, I want a nice 30 to 18 win. That's that would be a good game. Okay. So, so. All right. Yeah. Well, you're just asking for like the the balance. Come on. You don't want to go to like a, a 35, 32, just back and forth. No. Slobber. My knocker. heart doesn't like those kinds of games. Oh, well, Josh. Especially on the road. I'm going to break it to you. That's exactly what's going to happen this weekend. <laughs> this game is yeah. definitely getting out of hand quick. <laughs> like without the, a doubt. The, so the last, the last road game I went to was uh, Redskins, well, Commanders versus Falcons in Atlanta. And that was the game where like I took my friend, my friend Kim to her first game. We, she saw a, a punt return touchdown, a kickoff return touchdown, like uh, a back toss throw touchdown. Like it was like, it was like, I was like, girl, like this doesn't happen. And, but it was like back and forth, back and forth. That was Taylor Heineke. Um, big, big win. But, um, yeah, I don't like those kind of games. They're cool if you win them, but yeah. you lose, and then you got to fly home. That's, that's, a, that's a rough day. How do you feel about Austin Eckler? Freaking concussion. He's going to be out? Yeah, he's out. Just, just, uh, they just announced it today. Um, but uh, love it. Love it. Yeah, I mean, it, he, he still has a lot. And then also you put them on kickoff returns now. And I think, I think that's one thing to actually keep note on. Um, the new kickoff returns, a lot of the guys that are having success are running backs. Hmm. Like those like scat back guys that have speed that can break a tackle. And like then, this. oh, he's got, you know, he's at least at the 50, at the, at the plus 40. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, do, those we like guys are, do we like this, this new kickoff? Yeah, I'll be honest, it's grown on me. I don't mind it now that I understand it. Okay. When we didn't understand it, it's like the hell is going on. But like they're at least helping you with the 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 target zone and all that kind of stuff. It did look super like was, low budget. <laughs> I didn't like it in the beginning, bro. I, yeah. I, when we were watching the the Ravens Chiefs game and they set up, I, I decided a couple of years ago, George, you'll you'll definitely disagree because you you like college football way more than I do, and I know you do also. I don't do college. We not not a fan. <laughs> I tried watching the XFL after yeah. the NFL season ended like two years ago, and I'm watching the game and I'm giving it a good effort. I also bet on it too, so I could have a little more skin in the game. And that's when I decided that I don't like football. I love NFL football, <laughs> <laughs> and the kickoff reminded me of some XFL shit. Well, that, but now I kind of like it. To your yeah. point, Re- well, remember too, that's where they got it. That's that's that was that was what that's they implemented. What I was saying it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where they implemented it. Um, I, I don't mind it. It's because it was getting to the point where they, you know, when they moved the kickoffs up, it, it, people weren't returning anymore. So if it does also take away from some of the concussions and all that kind of stuff, it's all you know. What I mean, it's all. It's all yeah. in, in it's I mean, all in good spirits. It's just a matter of time until somebody gets their clock cleaned, um, and and they're like, "Oh wait, this causes concussions too." Oh, we're still playing football, you know. So like, I I know that it'll eventually balance out. They'll be their outliers. Uh, I'm I w- I want to move the kickers back. Like, can we have these these kickers that are able to kick at a hundred yards? Can we like start them at the five or something? <laughs> so it always lands in the landing zone. I mean, there's literally times where the kickers are kicking it two rows deep into the stadium. And you're like, Hmm. I, I, I do. Know. I do like the, uh, the strategy in it now though. Yeah. Like, is it a good time for me to kick it through the back of the end zone and not even play with it? Or should we mess around and see if we can get it in the landing area and squib and different things like it's, yeah. it, it definitely, uh, I think that it's going to give some more specialty to certain kickers as we move though. True. You True. Know I mean, certain guy, I mean, somebody's going to get good at squib kicking and messing up timing and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll see. you're right. You're right. Dude, especially Aubrey from the Cowboys. He hit a field goal last week in the Ravens game. 
that shit was good. No joke. It was a 65 yarder. It hit like the bottom of the stand. Mm. That's like an 80 yard field goal, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that was crazy. I was at the sports book <laughs> watching. I was like, holy shit. And the guy next to me was like, what? I was like, you didn't see that? Yeah. He's like, ah, whatever. I was like, okay. Shout out to the kickers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, bro. <laughs> D3 college kicker over here. Buffalo bro. State Bengals, baby. Uh, Like passing of the torch that game. Uh, Justin Tucker is missing field goals like crazy. And the last two years, Brandon Aubrey is just like, I'm the king now, bitch. <laughs> Yo, for real, man. He's, yeah, he has been. He has been missing a bunch of. Because uh, remember, he was always automatic 50 and back. And the last two years, he's, I think, like two for 12 or something. It's something crazy. Yeah. Has not been a good look. He's got the yips. <laughs> well, he's got the yips. Yeah, staying, staying with that Cowboys and Ravens game, right? I want to just circle back because we got a fan question from Mike in the Discord. Uh, he he DM'd it to me on Discord. And it, it's kind of going to tie two things into one, right? So his main question was, thoughts on the incident between Marlon Humphrey and Lamar Jackson on the plane after the game? And do we have privacy anymore as a society and as like our culture now mm. and for those that didn't see it after the cowboys and ravens game marlon humphrey goes on instagram live and he's filming a bunch of the players marlon humphrey also has a podcast shouts to jack settlement in front of the show he does a podcast with him and he's promoting the show, he's talking to all the players, and he goes up to Lamar, flashes the camera on him, and Lamar basically, this isn't verbatim, but he's like, yo, bro, yeah, good win, but we got work to do still. We're one and two. We saved our season, because historically, you dropped to 0-3. It's GG's. It's quiet for you. And we can't be celebrating still. We still got shit to do. And Marlon Humphreys kind of brushed it off and started filming other shit. You're around a lot of athletes. You're around a lot of fighters. You've had people at the studio. We've had people here, athletes, celebrities, rappers, the whole nine. Thoughts on this situation? Did they cross a line? Is there privacy anymore? How do you feel about this? I, I think there's definitely privacy, but you also have to know who you're around. You know, certain people, like you said, like Marlon Humphreys, that has has a uh, podcast. Those kind of people want to always go live. Like some dudes, they go live. I mean, listen, we talked about it earlier. You know, our guy, I'm Red, he's making probably about five grand a day on going live. So I get it. If you're getting paid for it, I get it. But at the same time, you're getting paid for it. You know what I'm saying? So you don't need to have the camera in my face and using me as some version of, you know, of, of content. Yeah. Especially, like you said, right after a win. You know what I mean? Like, there's certain things, and, and that's one thing that does suck a little bit about today's society. Like, we get too much access. You know what I mean? The thing that was always so mythical about athletes was you only saw them on Sunday. You might see them at a press conference, but, like, you didn't get this constant bombardment of what's going on in the locker room and all that other stuff in certain things like the locker room supposed to be sacred it's not or in um, was this on the locker room or this on the plane this on the plane on the plane this is on the plane mm -hmm. so the plane's definitely sacred like we you never saw that yeah you know what i'm saying so it's like certain aspects of it i don't know yeah he um it's crazy. I mean, we've seen Jack since being on the show go and he starts the pod with Marlon and he actually had an episode dedicated to this. And in that episode, I'm just going to say one thing, like with what Jack and him are doing, like what a crazy spot for Jack to be in. Right. However, he cuts up that episode is public perception of what happened because it was a huge story. I mean, everybody is talking about like, oh, is there actually like a riff? So on the podcast, when Marlon's talking about it, the way that the Instagram clip was cut was uh, like that the beef could, you know, he doesn't know, like, all right, does Lamar not like me because of this? Like he like kind of like left it almost WWE-esque <laughs> where it's just like, I don't know, you know what I mean? So I, I do got to check out the whole episode. Is this uh, getting blown out of proportion? I think 100% like Lamar's definitely been filmed on the plane and stuff before i just think it's like the new age kind of we won if they lost and he was doing shit like that i think lamar should throw the phone against the window um but that's not the the situation the case 
that was uh, presented. So I, I just, I know that the Ravens are going to be contenders again this year. It's just a bad time to like be tooting your horn. Like the, the Cowboys aren't that good, you know? Well, it, it was shoot in. They, they should have blown them out and they ended up being in a complete dog fight. Yeah. So it's like, let's not be so animated, especially coming from the defensive side of the ball when they just let them get dog walked down the end mm -hmm. and the, the offense had done all this work to, to build the lead. And then the defense just gave it away at the end. I think too, like not going to lie, had Marlon Humphrey been playing like insane and he's getting interceptions and he's not sometimes blowing coverages <laughs> like what happened in the Chiefs game where a couple of times there was blown assignments blatantly by him. I think Lamar thinks differently about that situation. You know, Lamar like was probably telling you that because you're not playing up to the level that you should be playing. <laughs> so that's that's my thought couple of things. So the name of the podcast also, because uh, Jack always shows us love. Yes. The name of their podcast is the Punchline Podcast with Marlon Humphrey. Shouts to Jack Settleman from Snapback Sports. It's a lot of things to break down. You said something before in passing. I don't want to brush over. You make money on Instagram Live. I 100% agree with you, but not in this context mm. when he's signed for $67 million guaranteed. Yeah. So for him, 10K a day if he goes live, still sure. a lot of money, but you can't sell me on that. Right? Yeah, no, 100%. And I've had conversations with Maurice Claret. Maurice is going to be on the pod very soon. And I usually don't Sick. like spilling the beans, previewing until we do record, but he's good people. He's part of the family and he'll be on the, on the show very soon. Um, we talk about it all the time about like, yo, keep the main thing the main thing. Something Mason Cam always talk about. And you see a lot of athletes doing podcasts now. And if you're Kelsey and you know you're on hole 18 of your career and it's the last, it's like the last dance for you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Cool. But you're going to get backlash. And I know they signed for a hundred million. So that's a bad yeah. example. Yeah. But listen, man, the thing that got you 20 million a year is your play on the field. Yeah. Don't start a podcast now to make 200 K. I think Priorities. It's, a pretty, Priorities. Yeah, it's a pretty obvious thing and then yeah. you receive backlash when you don't play well yeah when you are playing well and it's going great no one cares the kelsey brothers went to the super bowl the first year they did it that's right so it wasn't called a distraction it didn't affect their play they were the two key figures two of the four faces of the game were the kelsey brothers the kelsey bowl yep. so it didn't affect them but when you see other dudes starting shows and then you're not playing well People put up with your shit when you play well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is why first-round picks get opportunities. This is why Plaxico Burris shot himself when he came out of jail. He had another contract. We talk about Mike Vick all the time, $100 million after what he did to the dogs. I'm yeah. a dog lover. I'm a dog owner. This shit sucked. I was not a fan of that. But he's talented. He threw a pass against your commanders oh 90 yards in the air. Well, bro, I was there. That was uncalled prime for. time, yeah. I was, Monday I, was, I was in the house. Yeah. So, like, when you're talented, people put up with your shit. But the moment you start sliding, we don't want to hear that. I yeah. don't want to hear about your podcast and, and, and all. So, and to your point, George, he's, he's not playing at that level. Yeah. And Lamar's probably like, hey, man, we got a lot of shit to do. And also privacy, bro. I think nowadays we just don't have it much. Like I'm sure everyone listening to this, everyone watching this clip, because I'm going to clip it, when you're with your people, you say some stuff that is not appropriate and can be very dangerous if it's recorded or leaked out. Mm. I think everyone is, right? You see the memes all the time of like, yo, if the group chat ever leaked, it's a wrap, right? <laughs> yeah. So people, when they trust you and yeah. you're around your people, they put their guard down. Yeah. They enjoy themselves. They, they might say like, yo, that girl's bad as hell. And then wherever that <laughs> takes the conversation, right? So, yeah. listen, man, when you break that trust, yeah. that's when people don't fuck with you no more. They, well, look, think about, so um, one of my guys, Swaggy P, Nick Young, when you, when you, when you go back to uh, D'Angelo Russell, you filming Nick Young talking about such and such with some girls, and then now he breaks up with Iggy Azalea, like... He, D'Angelo Russell has never been trusted again throughout his career in the league mm -hmm. off of that play that happened his rookie season. Like, 
you can't do certain things like certain things like okay even if you do film it do not then send it like yeah i mean like that's the thing that always trips me out john moran's boys are the one that got him yeah like yeah they his friends yeah and i'm doing air quotes bro never met the guys but like that's not a real friend when he's costing you that kind of money too yeah like a real friend should be like yo what the fuck we doing dude you're the face of the league money but then also influence everything he got suspended like his whole career was altered because of like you said friends yeah i mean like friends like that you don't need enemies yeah I mean, it, and it's lately, it's it's lives. Like, just avoid lives. You're a public figure. Yeah. Control the narrative. You know, like it's nothing good is coming out of a live unless it is a secured situation. <laughs> Shannon Sharp, fucking <laughs> look at that, man. So much comes out of going live. Yeah. And yo, also, Not dude, good. like on a on a personal level, I've I've been around a lot of people that are athletes and celebrities. As I'm, like I said before, we all have. And, dude, many years ago, I remember I went out. I was at a WWE event, and I happened to go backstage. And right before we go backstage, my friend turns to me. He goes, yo, whatever you do, don't take your phone out. I'm going to kill you. And we take two steps. He turns around. He's like, I'm being dead ass. Like, no photos, no pics, nothing. Like, this is a private area. It's very exclusive. You can't be doing no dumb shit like that. When I've gone out with some athletes here in Vegas, it's like, and I want to, because it's also good for the brand. You take the picture, people associate with you. It's cool. It's dope. But then that's how you build relationships and you build trust. When I first met Cameron here, I didn't take no picture. I have one picture with them. Like these, I work with these guys, right? So like, that's how you develop relationships, friendships, partnerships. And then from there, moving forward. It does a lot for your brand. It does a lot for everything that you're doing. The only thing I did was I called my one friend who his favorite rapper was Cam growing up. I was like, bro, I just met Cameron. What the fuck? He's like, no way. And then I told him the story. But that's it. I didn't post that he followed me when people do that. Yeah. I find that shit corny. I'll be honest. Like, that's kind of lame when people are like, oh, look who. It's like, nah, man. Like, they're going to unfollow you now. Like, don't do that. Yeah. Or when you expose a, 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 someone sliding into your DMs. Yeah, that's not good. A lot of girls do that. Girls do that. I don't the think fact, I haven't been is crazy because I'm a prolific DM slider, bro. I don't give a fuck. If I, if I find you hot, I'm, if I find you attractive, I'm sliding into the DMs. What are you going to say? You're going to be like, oh, you're being weird. Like, I'm sorry I find you attractive. I want to take you out to dinner. Stay single then until you're 40. <laughs> not going to fucking, nah, that shit don't work with me, bro. There's a married couple that's like right outside the window right now. 100%, sure they were 100% like, New York there? right there. Yeah. <laughs> Nick is a DM slider? What? I'm not petty or anything, yo. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh my, uh, no, I'm not, I'll talk to you about it after the show. I'll talk uh, yeah, to you about, yeah, it, talk after about it after. Your reaction told me everything I needed to know. <laughs> But yeah, let us know in the comments, man, what you guys think about this. I think it's very important to keep certain things tucked away. I think there's certain things you need to protect. Everything in my life is pretty public. Um, but there's certain things that I kind of don't want people to know who I'm talking to or who I'm dating. Yeah, unless it's like Becky G, then it's like, that's that's a different now, you you love you some Becky G. Is. Sweet that's Jesus, little, that is your girl. Yo, yeah. I mean, I would love for one day, like, I am dating someone high profile like that. And like TMZ is like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah, that'll oh, make bro. Yo, that'll make my fucking low key. I'd be hyped, bro. The older I've gotten, it, that like I see guys that are with celebrities that they shouldn't be with. It's almost like how you can like reach a pinnacle. That TMZ article is everything. Yeah, she's with him. It's just a picture of me <laughs> on the beach in Ibiza. On the beach, got out with a fucking corona. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. Hashtag goals, baby. One, one, one girlfriend was a celebrity. The other girlfriend became a celebrity. Neither, neither time. Well, no, the, the one, we had a couple of red carpet things. Sometimes, yeah. see, like, if it isn't happening fast enough for me, I, I start leaking it. I'm like, hey, we're, we're going to be at this location. I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you my would God. Like paparazzi <laughs> You're giving the paparazzi uh, information? Oh, yeah. I mean, how else oh, are they supposed George. to know where I'm supposed to be? Oh, my God. But yo, I need to be in that a, article. On a serious note, though, man, building, building trust is everything, especially in this, in this industry. And the last thing I'll say is there's been many times on this show because the show isn't recorded live, right? There's been many times people say things that I could go viral. It could, mm. like ESPN type shit could be covered. And then after they say, yo, can you 
cut that. I wasn't supposed to say that. And it's not that it's inappropriate or cancelable. It's just like, I'm about to sign with this team. I can't say anything kind of thing. And that's how you honor their request. And that's how you build relationships. Yeah. You don't want to be that guy that like does gotcha shit. Like over the long run, like cool. You might go viral for a week and like, it's cool. But then after that, they're not going to fuck with you. That's right. And then what's going to happen is they're going to tell their other athlete friends like, oh yeah, don't nah, Josh ain't good. George and Nick ain't good. Like fuck that. So it's important to build trust and to build relationships in this, this industry and just in everything in general, man. And you know, perfect segue actually into, uh, one of the main segments on the show today. We have five undefeated teams, fellas. I want to ask you guys, mm-hmm. of the five, who do you trust the most? We have the Kansas City Chiefs, the Buffalo Bills, the Seattle Seahawks, the Minnesota Vikings, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. George, to you first. Of those five teams, who do you trust the most? Okay, ultimate trust in the top two. So then I like I really do want to just hammer in that the Chiefs and the Bills completely fine. I trust them. I love them. I I've already proposed uh after week 3. Now let's look at the bottom 3 cuz that's the real enticing ones. The Seahawks, the Vikings, the Steelers. The one that jumps out to me is the Steelers. I think they have way overseeded their expectations. I think their defense is at a caliber that we saw with the Browns last year. They just don't let up points. And Justin Fields, for the first time in a while, started hot. This is a crazy type feeling. And I think he hates Russell Wilson. Like, I think psychologically, <laughs> he wants to dominate Russell Wilson. And by... He he dominates Russell Wilson by going out there, winning ball games and performing well. Um, because yeah, they brought him in there to do that. Best ability is availability. A hundred percent. And Russell Wilson, uh, it's a Wally Pip situation. He may never play again in the NFL again. It's just it's over for him. Um, but I I I trust the Steelers. What about you, Josh? I uh well as far as the Steelers, um three Steeler type wins. Um all of the games have been tight. They've been defensive battles. The Steelers' defense have been playing well. T.J. Watt already got three sacks. He's doing well. Um, but uh, but like you said, if Justin Fields continues to protect the football, um, I think only one turnover. If he can do that and they can and they can rely on that defense, Mike Tomlin's on his y'all must have forgot tour. Yeah, honestly, did, did he wear a hat this past week? I'm sure. I'm sure he had something petty going on. They're, they've been He's doing been everything. Bald Tomlin lately. Everything's what been a season petty. To be bald, baby. Shit. But uh, but good. but the Steelers, their next three games: Colts, Cowboys, Raiders. They could easily go five and one or even six and zero oh in their first six. Mm. So, yeah, I mean they get they get through they get through the Colts. All bets are off. It's true, Nick. What about you, dude? Who you trusting? Did you like what I did with my I the top two? You just gotta trust. Yeah, you definitely gotta trust because of all those teams that we mentioned over the last what four or five years, they've always been there. Mm-hmm. They basically make the divisional round of the playoffs every year, and that's the Chiefs and the and the Bills. The team I trust the least is definitely Minnesota. Mm. Wow. No. Yeah. Really? No. Yeah. So here's the thing, right? Let me ask you this question. If you could pick the top unit in football, special teams, uh, but like team specific unit, Steelers defense is, if it's not one, it's, I think, a shoe in top three, especially how they've played this year. And you're including both offense and defensive units. Like, are you saying just like side of the ball? This is. I'm saying, yeah. Like, if I could put. So, like, uh, you know who I I think is top three? Cowboys special teamers. Because of Aubrey hitting 90 (laughs) yard field goals. And the onside kick. Right? And the onside kick stuff. So, to me, the Steelers defense might be the number one unit in football. Sure, sure. And then maybe, like, you could look at, like, the Lions offense, if you're into that, with all the weapons that they have. Sure, sure. Right? Um, you know, the... Pff, I'm trying to think of teams. Chiefs with offense. Like, 
Yeah, Niners offense when healthy. Yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. Chief, so, Chiefs offense when when clicking. Right. So yeah. I'm I'm taking the Steelers defense and I'm trusting the defense. And I think Fields, we spoke about this on the preview show. Fields Russell Wilson isn't at the stage of his career now where he could afford to miss time cuz of injury and then come back and be like here you go, yeah, the starting yeah, yeah. position. No, especially when you're with a new team, new organization, new head coach, the whole crew. New everything, different. yeah. New everything. You haven't done this with us, so we're going to ride the hot hand with Justin Fields. You don't need to do anything too crazy. Do what you're doing now. Don't have back-breaking turnovers like we always talk about. And I think because of the defense, it's like, bro, just honestly, if you just get us to like 17 points, we might win these games. Yeah. Their defense is playing really well. So for me... I'm I'm on the Steelers. I was wrong about them in the beginning of the year. They still have to go through the gauntlet. Yeah, they still got a tough the, schedule the ahead. End, the, and remember the end of their schedule is crazy. Yeah. yeah. But but I also think they play now all the, their division games yeah. like post Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Like they they have like Bengals, Ravens, Bengals, Ravens, like crazy at the end of the season. So for me, the but I know I mentioned the Vikings and then I, I spoke about the Steelers. <laughs> Uh, I'm still not I'm not buying into the Sam Darnold. I know he's playing he's playing well now, and I know it's kind of hypocritical because I care about who you've beaten, right? The the Chiefs are three and zero, but they have three really good wins. Mm -hmm. It's teams that we perceive to be title contenders coming into the year. Mm -hmm. So that to me is impressive, right? You beat a very public and popular Falcons team at home. In prime time, you beat the Bengals, who's the ultimate op for you. And then you beat the Ravens, who had the revenge factor going into that game after you beat them in the AFC title game last year. Mm -hmm. And of course, we trust it because it's Mahomes. Until proven otherwise, we do. But with the Vikings, their defense is doing a lot of funky stuff with uh, Brian Flores. He has them playing really well, even though they don't have a lot of big names on the defense. It's a team that collectively defensively is playing well. Mm -hmm. And we talked about Daniel Hunter leaving them and going to the Texans. It was a big loss. And I was just so wrong about the Vikings. And it's it's been a good story. Sam Darnold is an MVP candidate through three weeks. I just think that I would still probably bet them to miss the playoffs. Um, you get a plus number at plus 160. And they still have a tough schedule. You know, it starts with this week. They play the Packers. That's a big game there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe if they win that game and everyone now is sort of talk of the town vibes. Remember we did talk of the town yeah, last going year? In, I, I had that. I had oh, that you down. did? I had that down for the Bills. Oh. The Bills. The Bills are, look, so, so what I was saying was the Bills. The Bills have been playing brilliant football. Josh Allen distributing the ball. Everyone's getting, you know, getting a, a chance to shine. Um, but as Nick has always said, the talk of the town and their next three games are Ravens, Texans, Jets. And they easily could go from 3-0 and to 3-3. Three and three. It's not crazy. Yeah. Should not, am I saying that's going to happen? No. But are they going to be – these other guys could continue to be undefeated still. Very they, true. They easily could slip up against the Texans. They easily could slip up against the Ravens or the Jets. So any of those teams are playing well, you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. talk of the town. I I had that down. I, I I had I was ready for the talk of the town. I love it. I love it. What do you got? Uh, just talking about the Minnesota defense, dude. That they have two uh defensive edge rushers and a tackle, Jonathan uh, Grenard and then Pat Jones, that both have four sacks. So. Being able to generate pressure up front and having two of them that are kind of like no names, I mean, this is a a position group that's a, a revolving door. There's so many of them because they're so fat and they have to give max effort, and it's tough for fat people to do that consistently. So the fact that they got a couple of good ones there, I'm I'm buying into the Vikings. Like, I really okay. Uh, the comparison between Sam Darnold and Kirk Cousins. What Sam Darnold has done in the first three weeks to me looks like what Kirk Cousins could do if he played well for the first three weeks with that same team. So they've made deep runs with that same connection before. They just plug and replace and uh, huge uh, revenge game this week for Aaron Jones. 
So that one is going to be like a, you want to bet the ladder on a running back. Mm. Aaron Jones is doing three Lambo leaps. Ooh, I like this. <laughs> yeah. You know I'm a sucker for revenge. Games. I know, dude. And he already said it in a press conference he that he smiled, was going to do it. He smiled. He, yeah, well, he, he, leap. Yeah, he, said he's, he said he's doing Lambo leap when he gets in the end zone, if he gets in the end zone. Um, and, and Nick, you 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 really aren't on the Vikings mainly because their team is kind of middle of the road in – Everything offense, defense. They're not. They're not exceptional at any one particular thing. They're just solid, and I think that's kind of why they'll kind of it'll kind of revert back to the mean. It's a tough division as the season goes on. I think it's a lot tougher division than people give credit to. Hundred percent. With the Lions and the Pack. I mean, what the Packers have done for the past two weeks is insane. Like, who would have thought? Right? Yeah. No. Totally, man. And I also think with with the Vikings. You know, they still got two games against Caleb Williams. They got a couple other young quarterbacks they'll be going up against. So Brian Flores might be able to disguise a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, shit, even CJ Shaw was like, yeah, I don't know what they were doing out there. It was remarkable. And that's that's the guy that we hold to such a high standard. But they'll play Will Levis. They'll play Trevor Lawrence. They'll play Anthony Richardson. They play Caleb Williams twice. Uh, they might be playing Malik Willis. Talk about talk of the town. He's been getting a lot of smoke blown up his ass, too. And rightfully so. He's been playing well. We spoke about it on the Monday show about confidence, how Malik Willis, Sam Darnold, uh, Justin Fields, you know, these guys have been playing well because they're in an environment that they really like and people trust and have confidence in them. And are coached well. Right. All it takes, man, like, look, Sam Darnold goes to Kevin O'Connell, good young coach, good quarterback young coach same thing Malik Willis goes to the Packers Matt LaFleur great offensive mind great quarterback coach like you know people people downgrade these guys so much and that's why when we were talking before George as far as like young quarterbacks man like if you're not in a situation to thrive all it takes is you just to move on to some place where you actually are taught well and they put you in a position for success Mm -hmm. and I want to mention one thing about Buffalo right Last year, they were 3-1, and one, and they had wins by 28, 28, and 34. Mm-hmm. And then halfway through the year, they got a lot of injuries. Remember, they were 5-6, and 6-6, six, six and six, somewhere there. And then we did the Deer Buffalo. Yeah. And then they, got, they didn't lose a game until they lost at home to the Chiefs. And now, to your point, they're about to play three straight road games, too. Oh, those are all on the road yeah, as well. They're playing the yeah, Ravens, see, Texans, yeah. and Jets. All on the road. Sheesh. And they still have to play the Seahawks. The Dolphins again. They got to play the Chiefs. Then they're also playing the Lions, Niners, and the Jets again. Yeah. So they have a tough, tough schedule. However, man, has that video aged well, bro, <laughs> about trusting Josh Allen. Yeah. Because in big spots, it's him and Mahomes that I trust the most. And the two teams that George mentioned as the two teams we don't really need to discuss much about. Those are the quarterbacks of those teams. Mm-hmm. Josh Allen is playing at right now. He's the MVP favorite. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Called it, you know. Ah, so, but Nick, it's so early. I know, I know, I know. Man, I listen, know. It's like let me tell you the this, horse though. at the Kentucky Derby get out the fucking stalls. Good, one hundred percent. You are right. You are right. I need to slow down with like the Saquon Barkley stuff too. Marvin Harrison is is tied for second behind uh, your boy Daniels and Neighbors. Uh, those are the top three. Neighbors, but when you have the lines move in your favor, it always makes you feel good. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing, like especially a Barkley play where he was forty to one at one point. Yeah, and yeah. now he's plus two eighty. Like that makes me feel very good in many different places of my body. <laughs> so to me, that's what I look for. Right now, if it was the other way, then I'd be concerned. Like Cooper, Cooper Dijon. Yeah. He's 300 to one now. He was 16 to one. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, that was a terrible. I don't even know if he played. Yo, Isaiah, does he play? Bro? No, he He's does an not. Eagle fan. No, he, he don't be playing. He don't get no burn, right? He don't, be, he don't play. Like yeah. That. He's he so get, hard. What was he saying? No, he's like, I'm confused with him and Blankenship every single yeah, fucking yeah, time oh, I see him yeah, out yeah. there. They, they got one to me white boys in the, yeah, in the secondary. Yeah. They got one to me white boys in the secondary right One now. white guy in the secondary, cool. Two? That's the Sirianni special right there. Yeah, you can't, you can't uh, have that. You can't guys, have we're, that. We're revolutionizing the NFL. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, we, we can't do that. So to me, I think, hold on. We didn't talk about Seattle. Yeah, I was, I was, I was going to say, by the way, of, of, that, of the five. My division winner. I mean, they've fair, lucked right? out. But, you know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to say of, of, the, of the teams, they've played the most trash organizations. Yep, yep. They barely beat the Pats. 
They barely beat everyone. Like and, that Miami and, game, bro, because George George took the Dolphins plus yeah. five in his pool, and he gave it out last week yeah. um, as one of his plays. And I was so proud of him, dude, because I was like, you never like when we first met, you never would have made that play. And even if it doesn't hit, yeah. but that's part of the game too. But it was a good read, and they got into the red zone even without Tua, mm-hmm. and all the all the money was was coming in on the Dolphins. Tickets were going on Seattle because Tua wasn't in, and it's like, bro, the amount of times they had chances to score. Yeah, that was a good read, right? Yeah. So, not only have they played trash, the games have been a lot closer yeah. than they should have. Sure. So, I just think that the rest of that division is hurting, except for Arizona. But the rest of the division is banged up. The Rams are banged yeah. up. Oh my God, the Rams, Rams are, are banged up. Rams so are. That's banged why up. I I trust Seattle only because they're healthy right now. That's fair. No, that's fair. Seattle's next three: Lions, Giants, and and then the Niners. So that was my also the, the other reason why I was like, yeah, I don't know. They have a good little two headed monster going with Zach Charbonnet and then Kenneth Walker when he comes back, he'll, you know, have like you know, fresh miles on his system. So that's good. Uh DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Like everything is just solid about them. Um, but from what I understand, they're banged up on their defensive side right now. And yeah, that I, I just can't buy into the Seahawks. They did me dirty last year in the Survivor contest. <laughs> um and I just I'll never forgive them. You won't trust um, them ever again. Yeah, and for a new head coach to start off three and zero, oh, press conferences have been real fucking easy for you, buddy. Wait until uh you hit the heart of the season and you have to start answering some tough questions. Ooh. Um Yeah. I I I'm just also I can't buy into Geno Smith. I think there's just a bit of me that's like, okay, you are a capped franchise. Mm. Like, I, you're, you may make a wild card spot and then compete in a playoff game, but then lose at the end by two touchdowns. That's where you are as a franchise. Well, and I think I think Geno is one of those quarterbacks that they're, they're good enough to win you games, but you have to have a stout defense that props up your quarterback. And then he can play well within himself. Uh-huh. He doesn't have to go do too much. For sure. But if our defense is stopping everybody, he's going to look great because he's not going to make a whole bunch of mistakes. And if he's not doing that, you know what I mean? Aiden um, Hutchinson's at six and a half sacks right now. Question for mm-hmm. you both. How many sacks does he have uh, this time next week? Nine. Who are they, who are they playing? Seattle. Seattle. Monday Night Football. You'll be hearing he's about six, he's, you'll be hearing he's about that one in a He's at six and a half sacks right now. How many sacks? He'll, he'll be at eight. He'll be at eight. Yeah. He'll get a sack and a half. Bro, they I mean, they better scheme something up nice because I Aiden Hutchinson's coming off the edge it, like faster and more on time than I've seen any defensive end uh hot this take. Year. Yeah. Draft a white boy uh D end. If you get a white boy at the end, because I was thinking about it, like I was talking to somebody about, you know, just all the first round There's picks, a couple. all the first round picks that my team had and like, you know, all the first round defensive linemen. And I was like, dang, we need another Ryan Kerrigan. And I was like, oh, and I, I looked around the league and I was like, man, some of the best dang on uh, D ends are white boys, man. You got like if, if there is a if there is a cold white boy that's coming out, draft him. That's who you go get. You go uh, draft him. Landon sure. Jackson. uh He's he's white appearing. He's he's a mixed boy, but <laughs> for the Razorbacks, I'm just saying he's he's pretty good. He's pretty good. Yeah, he was projected to go like middle of the draft this past year. Oh, okay, all right. He'll definitely be. Well, he he better be showing out every Saturday then. He's gonna be in a Commanders jersey, dude. No, no, no. And you're gonna no, be no. like, I called this. <laughs> <laughs> we got one. <laughs> Hopefully, we, he'll be in the middle of the draft again. <laughs> yeah, I love that, bro. Because like Hutchinson, Nick Bosa. Uh, Max Crosby, the Watt, Crosby, um, the uh, the one, the Watt, uh, Watt, obviously, uh, the one on the Bengals. What's his name on the Bengals? Oh, Hendrickson. Hendrickson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brian, there's there, there, there's Brucey. like a solid like yeah. the solid like eight. Yeah, yeah nah, that's that are pretty cold. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> their motor is good. They're not out here buying bling. Like yeah, you know I mean, like all they care about is football. That's it. <laughs> we need some yeah. dogs. high motor guy. He that's don't need it. No like, he he ain't, he ain't doing a whole lot of stuff. He gonna do his job. <laughs> <laughs> and go home to his kids. Whereas I gotta worry about, you know, uh is it, you know, Hezekiah or whoever, whoever's coming off the edge. Like, I don't know if he's gonna My be at the club. Shit, bro, is during the drafts when it's like 
high motor guy, <laughs> quick but not fast, yeah. always around the ball. It's like white, 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 <laughs> white defensive player from like the Big Ten <laughs> in Iowa. He's always a nose defensive. for the football. Nose for the nose football. For the football. Oh, it's an Iowa linebacker. Yeah, yeah. Iowa neck linebacker. doesn't doesn't oh plays faster than his numbers yeah, at the play, combine. Plays faster than his forty times. It's always oh, a white that's dude. Great. Bro. That's it's great. Always a white dude, man. That's Every great. single time. He plays faster till till he's dropping in coverage. Is like yeah, why is he always yeah, late? Yeah, yeah. Lack sideline to sideline speed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> north south <laughs> south tackler. Yeah. <laughs> Stereotypical white guy shit when it comes Uh-oh. to the draft. I want to wrap this segment with this, though, on a serious note. Eliminating the Chiefs and Bills because the Chiefs are minus 4,000 to miss the, to make the playoffs and the Bills are minus 850. Seahawks minus 130. Vikings minus 180. Steelers minus 122. George, if you had to pick one to miss the playoffs, who would it be? To miss or make? Because you just gave the make odds. I gave the make odds. Yeah. I'm saying which ones would you would, pick? Because they're all favored to make the playoffs. So who you. would you pick to miss? <laughs> oh man, I'm picking I'm picking the Seahawks. There's no way the 49ers are that bad. Like they're they'll they'll they're gonna figure it out. You don't think you don't think that it's just the season from hell, bro, for them. Like if you look and dude on the preview show, I wanted, I had a couple of steaming takes like Panthers to win the division. One game back though at first, so we do have that. I had Seahawks to win the division. I had the Jacks to win the division. I really wanted to go into the preview show and say that the Niners weren't going to make the Super Bowl because you had a lot of shit going on. You had Trent Williams was holding out. You had the Ayuk situation. Uh, Debo was signing, uh, starting a new podcast, right? I'm not the biggest fan of that. Brock Purdy, how much should he get paid? McCaffrey, we know he's pretty fragile Purdy. unless he does. And then the ultimate black cat in the room was their first round pick got gunned down. Right? He got shot at. Yeah. It's crazy. yeah. So like a lot of red flags and you have the Super Bowl hangover. It's hard for you to get back there. They didn't yeah. get back there when they lost to the Chiefs the first time. They didn't make the playoffs. I think that's yeah. the only time that Shanahan missed the playoffs since he's been a Niners coach. So my question to you is, you, you don't buy into that where maybe it's just a season for hell for them? Uh, based on how competitive they were last week, I, I think people look at that game and like, I, obviously the Rams were depleted um, and they should have gotten beat badly by the 49ers. But, you know, I minus the injuries, they are a team that has been there before and there's like an expectation and it's not like i don't see uh them being able to flip it around um i think that coaching will come into factor a little bit later in the season and i know i went on a rant about Shanahan not being the greatest coach on uh the last episode i think he's good enough to make the playoffs in this division um yeah and and I just think the Seahawks also will come back to reality, uh, mm-hmm. and they're they're going to go on a little slide of their own. Yeah, I I, I think just, I, I think the Seahawks uh, out of out of that group definitely the Seahawks. Um, just because of like I said before, what they've shown in their three wins, they haven't been dominant. They now, granted, you know we always talk about the one score games and that kind of stuff. When does that kind of come back to the mean? Um, but talking about the Niners, the Niners next three games got the uh, you got the the Patriots, um, Patriots, Cardinals, and then the Seahawks. So they have a very good chance to get back right over these next three weeks. Um, I do think, and I've said, I said, you know, on on my show actually that just how many times you cr- climb that mountain to not get all the way to the top and have to start back over and climb back again. It's so exhausting and they don't have the youngest roster. If you really think about it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of their main guys are starting to get a little bit, very good point. Yeah. Starting to get a little bit older in the tooth to not have done it. Um, So, but I I think that that, I think they make the playoffs. They're going to be, they, they make the playoffs. As you said before, their division so banged up. Um, I I don't know if they don't win the division, but, it's going to be very hard for anybody to, to – it won't be the Seahawks. I'll say that. <laughs> Seahawks ain't going to overtake them. Yeah, I think the team I would pick to miss, 
and again, I know I hyped up the Steelers' defense. I think just because of the conference mm, and their the division, schedule, their division, they still haven't played no division games. I think that would be the team I would pick to miss the playoffs. You get mm-hmm. plus one ten on them to miss the playoffs, even though they're undefeated right now. Unless this defense becomes one of those defenses that we talk about as like the two thousand Ravens and mm. the eighty five Bears yeah. and all these, you know, steel curtain. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Then it could carry them. But I think eventually you're gonna need to score like you're gonna run into one of these teams that are gonna put up some points. Yeah. You're gonna have to combat that. So I'm picking the Steelers only because the conference and the division. Yeah. It does get tougher. I mean, uh, you definitely have a point. The NFC West is not as competitive. But, you know, I I really do feel that there's there's other teams. I think the NFC North eats up wild card spots and that's possibly a reason why the Seahawks don't make it. Very possibly could be three teams from the NFC North making it. Uh, am I crazy staying with this conference and uh, AFC North? Bengals are 0-3. The last team to make the playoffs after starting 0-3 were the Houston Texans in 2018. They won nine straight games with Watson when that happened. They've played way better than what the record is. Mm-hmm. Right? They have a top five offense. Burrow is healthy. Ish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wrist. The wrist. Yeah, but I think he's played well enough though. He, he's shown like, he's shown think... that it's not a it's not it's not yeah, breaking him down. Yeah, yeah you're I right. think they're 0 and three not because of him. I don't think he's the reason that they're 0 and three, which is why I think quarterback wins and losses are not stats. They're not it's not a legitimate stat. I don't think it's it's fair. Like what if what if they were three and zero and he had two touchdowns to eight interceptions? He's three and zero though. <laughs> so I I never felt like that was. There's a couple of things, right? Like wins and losses. I don't think our quarterback stats and not all interceptions are made equally. That's right. I always talk about your boy when RG three won Rookie of the Year. It was because he threw less picks than Andrew Luck. Yeah. Andrew Luck also threw the ball 250 more times. Yeah. So that's why he was throwing more interceptions. So I don't think all interceptions are made the same. Now, mm-hmm. don't turn it over like, uh, I forgot what quarter, I think it was Anthony Richardson a couple of weeks ago threw an interception on like first down inside the five. Like, mm-hmm. don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Settle for some points. That upsets me. No picks in the red zone and no picks in year 20. Yeah. Everything else could be viewed as a bona fide punt. Yeah. So it's not Burrow, right? And I think them being 0 3, they play the Panthers this week. Should be a get right spot. You know, Panthers coming off a monster win. Though Andy Dalton revenge. Oh, Nick, this that's is right. The yeah, week. that's right. This is Andy Dalton revenge. They, Andy Dalton buries the Bengals. Whoa. I mean that I I by covering the spread. Um okay. yeah. <laughs> by, yeah, yeah. Let me... Where where oh. uh is the game in, in Carolina. Carolina? Yeah. It's definitely an appealing spot because you're right. It's not the offense. The offense is perfectly fine. The defense, it looks like they've been going to church. Very holy. They are just they are just allowing so many big time plays and for teams to generate offense on them. It's like I don't know how much weight do you put into week one because if that's if that's a any testament to where the Patriots defense is, you know, uh, against that top offense. All right. The offense didn't perform well there. And then the defense, you know, blows it for the next two games because the defense played rather well against the Patriots, but we expected them to do that. Um, This is a really bad spot for the Bengals. Do you ever like, this is like uh, the Bengals are like the kid that graduated high school and, keeps going back to the high school football games like years after he's he's graduated he's just not cool anymore uh the Bengals are getting long in the tooth they were cool for three years they made the Super Bowl everybody's like holy shit this is the greatest combo uh that we've ever seen between a quarterback and a receiver but that you guys can't go 0 and three 
You know, and I know the offense can't play defense, but Joe Burrow and the offense certainly can motivate and help, you know, try to motivate this defense to play better. Things are really bad. The Bengals are starting to look like the kid that cannot leave high school. I um it was interesting. So ESPN was talking about like Joe Burrow has to do more and like they were kind of having an argument about, you know, can he do anything more? Those kinds of things. And it made me think back to when uh, Peyton Manning first broke uh, Dan Marino's record when he had 49 touchdowns that year. And he had 49 touchdowns that year because the defense was so bad that they had to score every single possession. Like he, there wasn't a, there, we didn't even see Mike Vanderjet. Like he was out there, he was out there getting touchdowns every single possession. And if that's what the Bengals defense is right now, you can't leave any meat on the bone. Like every possession, we got to go get points. And if that's what they have to be, because, you know, I've been kind of bringing up everybody's schedules, but after the, after the Panthers, they had, they, they have the Ravens at home. They, they take another week. They have the Giants, but then it goes Browns, Eagles. Raiders like the 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 season just keeps going and it's like at what point are you going to turn it around? Because they got to get back to five hundred as quick as they can. Yeah, you know I mean you're already down three, and then it'll be Halloween. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty yeah. much. You know what I mean? So it's like, how quick can they turn it around? I think they definitely can. Um, you know, they trust me. I at no point, you know, the homegirl that was at my house was like, oh yeah, you guys are going to win. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> like I've seen this team rip, you know, defeat from the jaws of victory more times than I wish to count. Like this game is not over. Like they're a, they're they're a great offense. You said Joe Burrow's been playing well. The injury Five has touchdowns, no yeah. intros, seventy one percent completion. You, you, yeah, it's definitely not him. And again, not on him. That's why wins and losses are in quarterback stats. Yeah, at least for me, I, I'll never. You know, this guy's uh, he has a career record of fifty and twenty five. It's like well. I still rather I might want to have Justin Herbert over him, who's like a 500 quarterback in his career. Oh, you know what it might be, Nick? They you know, losing the Joe Mixon and being able to control the clock. Their offense is so good; they just score so fast now. The defense is constantly tired. You were on. You were on Joe Mixon. It, it seems to be the case. I don't think they have a running back that they trust like that. Both them, both their running backs was running up and down the field on me That's on Monday Night Football. I can't, I can't speak yeah. on who, who their running back is. Their running, yeah. the Chase running backs Brown and, good. And, and Zach Moss. Yeah, yeah, Zach Moss looked good. Yeah, I don't know, man. So like, I always, I always think of it like the schedule is pretty daunting. But they're they're thirty five to one now to win the Super Bowl, and that kind of just stood out to me. Like it was the same reason why around this time last year when they were struggling, I bet Joe Burrow to win MVP it was sixty to one. Mm-hmm. And then he caught fire those five games before he got hurt. Like I vividly remember the Wednesday before the Thursday night football game, we were recording here. They played the Ravens, and that's where he got hurt, bro. He was like plus eight hundred, and I had a sixty to one. Remember we were talking? Yeah, about I, that? I remember. I You're like, yo, do, do you regret cashing out? I was like, nah, <laughs> I do, bro. Yeah. I do regret <laughs> cash, not cashing out. But yeah, man, it it was just something interesting, man. Like I always try to think of. If you have a top five guy, I pencil you in for at least 10 wins. Yes. But they would have to go 10 and four the rest of the way. And the schedule is still like they got some banger games. Wow. 10. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, when you look at it that yeah, way, right? Yeah. Like, yo, now you, yeah. can't, like, you can't go nine and five. No. Because nine wins might not get you in the playoffs in the AFC. So Especially not in their division. It's going to be tough, man. But I, I don't know. There's just something about them, dude. Now – Shit hits the fan this week if Andy Dalton and them beat them. Um, I think it's very concerning. But to just put a bow on this conversation, Joe Burrow has faced a team coming off of against the spread cover, George, 25 times in his career. He's 19-5-1 against the spread. Wow. It's a good spot to take the Bengals here because the Panthers are coming off a big win. Mm-hmm. And if the Bengals turn their season around, they should do what they did last year in Arizona where Chase went to the media and was like, yo, I'm always open. And then he scored three touchdowns. Yeah. And they they blew the doors off the Cardinals. That's what they got to do this week to the Panthers. And then, look, man, for as hard as their schedule is, Josh, mm-hmm. those teams are also going to be playing Joe Burrow and the Bengals. It's not like we're talking about the Giants having to yeah, play yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Nah, this they, they got to play a top five guy. He'll, he'll go anywhere and play yeah, well. So That's fair. We're going to see. We're going to see what happens. That's I'm excited fair. for it. Let's dive into the picks. A uh, little recap. Fucking A-Chan, man. 
We would have hit a change. monster 41 to 1 odds. Thumbs down, bro. It's <sighs> just no, it's it's inexcusable. Um Oh, it was such a good pick too, Keon Coleman. I by the way, when I hadn't seen how he scored his touchdown, absolute dog. Yeah. There was nothing stopping him from getting into the end zone. A but, uh, A chain, learn something from that. By the way, Keon Coleman um played no snaps the first three drives. And then that was the first drive he played on, and he scored a touchdown. Dog. <laughs> dog. Straight dog. Straight dog. I want to just run through the picks. Up to now, the recap. Ursalita is one and two. Commanders, plus seven and a half. We gave out last week. In this economy, is three and one. Derrick Henry, anytime touchdown last week. Uh, Adriana is one and two. Had the Browns minus six and a half. Uh, let me ask you this. I haven't asked you. Who's the hottest woman that's ever lived? at one point in time that's why we had we say adriana because i think yeah, adriana, adriana lima, lima is up there she's up there like sure. her her peak and prime was the greatest of all time who's your pick like everything everything is probably gonna be either holly or freaking selma hayek they're there selma hayek is the the, the accent just always it, the accent, the accent and the friendliness always. I like, mean, bro, disarming. You're talking to someone that's pro Latina. <laughs> Spanish women age the best. White girls age like milk. Asians age no age the best. So. No, you know what? No, it was so funny. I uh, <laughs> my boy, my boy dates white girl, and like I was like, take a picture of her today. Because tomorrow it's 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 already it's already it's roll it's rolling downhill. This isn't going to get better. Like it no like like there's very very few white girls. It's like you take a picture of them now, you take a picture of them five years from now. You're like, ooh, she figured some things out. It's like yeah, what she figured out what is going to happen. Get Botox. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do what out. in the last three years? But yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, my kind don't age well, bro. White girls is not, that's not it, man. That's not it. <laughs> but before the podcast gets off the rails, maybe we'll make it a Patreon exclusive one day. Uh, <laughs> Spanish up, that's for certain. Okay, so Adriana, that's the favorite play of the week. That's one and two. The toxic one, George. You ready for this? It's crazy. It's three and oh, baby. We're telling you what not to bet, right? And again, it's very important because people are like, dude, good call on the pan. No, I didn't bet the Panthers last week. I bet them the first two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> got stretched that was not it was not fun but last week the toxic one is yo this line is very suspect it's weird andy dalton gets announced the starter and the line moves down from seven and a half to five and a half and it just stayed there all week so toxic one is three and oh and then trust me is three and oh mm. you guys to trust me anytime td that i've been giving out on patreon 12 of 23 have hit plus 1150 if you're straight betting all of them and yeah, that's kind of where we're at now. I'm excited for week four. Fellas, I, I feel pretty good about week four. There's a lot more appealing lines than there were last week. I think that it's it's pretty wide open. Um not not a crazy amount of like line shifting, but I think there are huge favorites that give me like the ick. <laughs> you know, like I'm just like, I there's no way. I can trust some of those numbers. Um, but yeah. What about you, Josh? You you feeling confident? In week uh, I feel I feel pretty good. I um I d definitely don't get the ick from the uh for the Jets. That one feels about right. Mm. So what what is that for you? The Jets. That's that's Adrian. So you like the Jets? Oh yeah. Oh, 100%. Ooh. Seven and a half. Seven and a half versus the Broncos. The Jets are about to go on a hot streak. And they're listen. It's it's interesting, you know. You we talk about my commanders and Jaden Daniels. Give me a play, give me a play. Whereas Aaron Rodgers earmuffs and everybody's earmuffing at the same time. That stuff matters, bro. It does. And the Jets are. I, I said before, you know, and I know me and you talked about it offline. The, the Jets are about to go, so I, I think they're going to go to work on the Broncos. The Broncos aren't a good team. I've been I've been money lining them, laying juice and all that. I'm just rolling it over. I did it week yeah. one. I lost, but I did it with the Titans. I did it with the Pats. I'm doing it again with the Broncos. They're at home. I like this spot here. The Aaron Rodgers led Jets. George Aaron Rodgers with extended rest, the fifth most profitable against the spread mark. 
of 225 quarterbacks the last 20 years. He's 16, 9, and 2 against the spread. In his career, he's 31, 20, and 2, 61% with extended rest. Remember, they played on Thursday Mm -hmm. last week. Now they're playing Sunday against a rookie on the road against his defense. I do like the seven and a half. If I had to make a play on this game, I'd probably pick that. Mm. I was. This is my toxic one. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. I like. Because here's the thing. I I feel like the Jets, although an amazing team, and they are starting to hum. It just feels like it takes a while for it to get going and clicking for me at times, and that's why I I see what the Broncos did last week. It's kind of like an uplifting. Okay. Let's ride any semblance of momentum that we can and to try to defeat the great. I know that they're not going to win outright, but this is just one where I'm like, it just shouts field goal fest to me. Like, this is just going to be an old school. You see it. You're like, oh, this number's super low. Uh, the Broncos have an uh, edge rusher that has three sacks right now, Jonathan Cooper. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting to see A-Rod uh, under... Uh, extreme duress and yeah that's my jets take be careful the seven and a half for this team to me just seems seems a bit much Hmm. yeah what's your toxic one since i just uh yeah 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 no that's a good one man you're a pro's pro i think my toxic one i think it's the chiefs Oh. Mm. Minus eight on the road against the Chargers. 70% of the tickets coming in on the Chiefs. About even ish on the money on the Chiefs. Herbert might not be playing, but I think you're going to see Harbaugh be like, yo, Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins. <laughs> running the ball. We're running on first, second, third, and fourth down. <laughs> You yeah. got to keep that fucking guy on the sideline. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, yo, it just feels like the Chiefs The Chiefs are 3-0. and We trust them, right? But they haven't looked good. Like, there's a lot of things. You could move the ball on them. Their yeah. defense is not as good as it was last year. And they do have the offense, right? But I just think this spot here, I would be very careful. Defense me, is very big. For me, that's, that's the toxic one. Yeah. Basically, I'm not taking the Chiefs. I would only play the dog, dog or pass kind of situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, my toxic one actually is uh, the Ravens minus two and a half versus the Bills at home. Mm. Uh, the The Bills have actually won the last two of the three last meetings, um, but uh, but the Ravens need this, so I'm leaving it the hell alone. Yeah. No, thank you. No, thank you at all. Yeah, I I get you. I get you. And I feel like people are buying back into the hype. They saw what they did to the Cowboys last yeah. week. And it's like, no, no, don't. Uh, did, did this line surprise you guys? And the Bills Ravens? Was this one where you saw it? You're like, no, I'm no. Because the Bills, the Bills are the Bills are the talk of the town. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, and so you can't you, you're not going to you're obviously not going to make them the outright favorite. You're not going to make it a pick them either. Um, because the Ravens are still the Ravens, but at the same time, the Ravens haven't played great. They've played okay. They've played very good in spots, but they're one and two. Like they need this win, and they need this win against a very good team to kind of start to establish themselves. So if they lose this one, they're one and three. Their season starts to come under question. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, I get it. I get it. It just I, the the Bills have seemed like a team this year to me that are is just a buzzsaw mm. and I feel like they should have been rewarded by at least a one and a half. I mean, you can, cl- the line started at, at three, it's down to two and a half. Does it get down to two before kickoff? Mm-hmm. Like, cause I, I, as a layman better, you would see a three and O team and you'd be like, I'm, I'm hopping on this. <laughs> yeah. As a, as a dog. Yeah. Uh, that's my Adriana actually oh, okay. oh wow. is, is the buffalo money line wow yeah yeah i think this is a prime time game uh now there's one of two ways obviously it's like the prime time game either goes lamar's way and this is like kind of like his his push or it's like josh allen 
has a chance here on national television for the second straight week to prove that I am him. Really start separating. Uh, and I just think it's a I am him type of year for him. I love them. Uh, and I also, Nick, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do this. Am I allowed to pick two? There was two that I really loved. You know what? You could because I have two for trust me. Oh, I'm undefeated and I'm going fucking crazy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Vikings money line. I got two dogs this week that are my favorite no. plays of the week. No, no. The Vikings going into Green Bay before Green Bay is even Green Bay. I love that. Okay. Oh, There's okay, no better okay. time to play Green before, Bay. Before, before, before Green Jordan, Bay turns into Green Bay. I yeah, got you. If Jordan Love comes back, which is, I, I haven't seen the reports, but I'm assuming this is, they're going to give it a go with him. Oh, George, you broke my heart. Is, is Jordan Love playing? Uh, it's it, it might be like a game day time before game time decision. Yeah, probably, okay. I, think, I think he's still another week. It doesn't matter if Jordan Love is playing. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> I love these two picks. I'm in love. I'm literally. I will marry these two picks. Oh my god, dude! My trust me is the Packers minus two and a half. Wow, bro! You think you know a guy? The line, <laughs> yo, listen to this. Well, right? You're a Viking hater based off of what we talked about earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. But yo, cool. check this out, man. Cool. We're talking about talk of the town, right? Yeah, Sam yeah. Darnold, Minnesota yeah. Vikings, two and one versus three and zero. Oh. The line was minus five for the Packers. Mm. Now it got bet down to minus two and a half. Wow. That's a I'm taking, move. I'm taking the Packers as my trust me and staying in division because I said I was going to have two. You talked before about who Seattle has played. They're going into Detroit. Detroit lost to them last year. Yeah. Week two. Yeah. At home. Seattle's feeling good, undefeated. We played Tim Boyle. We played Jacoby Brissett. <laughs> we played who they play in week one? Bo Nix, rookie. Yeah, Bo on Nix. Road. Yeah. And barely won. Barely won, right? Now you're playing Jared Goff at home. Even though Goff hasn't looked as great as he did last year, they're running fucking hit, uh, hook and ladders and all this shit. They have a lot of weapons. I think Detroit beats them by three touchdowns. My trust me is Detroit minus three and a half. That hook ain't scaring me. And then the Packers. Minus one and a half. Minus my, two and a half. Sorry. My uh my trust me is uh you just gotta simply pay the Bengals minus uh minus two and a half uh, minus uh three and a half on the road. Uh if they can't beat the Panthers, their season is over. It's over. That's it. Yep. That's it. So if if there's a bet on the on the board that it's like, well, I know that one's gonna hit. It better be that one or you got much, much bigger problems. So they have to win this game. And I want to say something before. You mentioned the Bills and Ravens game as mm -hmm. like the money line. This is why, unless you have conviction like you do, like you're a bad example for this because you actually like it and you laid out a case. This will be a game I'm not betting. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a bar fight. I don't know how to, how to predict it. And you don't need to bet every game. Yeah, that's right. You know, that's why yeah. there's betting and gambling. Yeah. Gambling is, yeah, I got to bet it because it's Sunday Night Football. Yeah. Betting yeah. is, oh, I'm going to just sit back and relax. I, now, yeah, what you would see, those kind of games, what I'll end up doing is I'll actually, that's when I'll start doing the parlays and I'll start doing same, same game parlays and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Because then you can start to get a read like, oh, okay, Derrick Henry over 40 yards. Derrick Henry should hit over 40 yards. Like, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff I'll bet. But I ain't betting the game. Mm -mm. Yeah. I don't uh -huh. feel confident at all. Yeah, out of out of all the weeks with the dogs, like I, I'm, I didn't want to go under central because there's lots of good under plays this week too. Uh, like the Steelers under, absolutely baffles me. Like the Steelers hold people to no points; they also score no no points, and I believe it's a uh, forty mm. is the over under, and it's like I am in love with the under on this. Uh, <laughs> who like, who's, I, is Steelers? Uh, who I, I, Colts? Yeah, Steelers in Colts. Indy. That's another weird line too, man. Yeah, that one. That one's. T yeah, no, it should still probably go under. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm changing my trust me. I was going to go Houston minus six and a half because I think the Jaguars have officially given up. Um, all thanks to Nick's curse. 
Uh, you got to go to Jacksonville and figure that out, dude. Like, oh, they're you know, one they're, in, they're one in twelve since I made Trevor Lawrence the thumbnail and said no one respects the Jaguars. I remember he's the, the one reason. Twelve. Sorry, a hundred percent the reason. Um, Oops, you got to figure Duval that out. Duval is not happy with you. I can't go there, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I loved I loved Houston. I'm like trusting me because I saw what Josh Allen did uh, on Monday Night Football, just dissecting him. But I'm changing it. Like, there's just no way that TJ Watt doesn't have three sacks. And Anthony Richardson, uh, touchdown to interception ratio is in the in the negatives right now. Mm. He's thrown three touchdown passes and six interceptions. Uh, he's bad, right? We could all agree that the one throw extended his career. He will get a contract based off that one throw he had week one. <laughs> but he's bad. Uh, is it, I don't know how they put this at forty. This is a baffling total to me. He's he's played he's played that poorly. You feel like he's played that poorly? I just know that when you give the team the other team the ball six times and you've only thrown three touchdowns, like that's, can't, that's can't, just about all I need. Can't, to know. can't turn the ball over. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Real quick. Remember what we said about Caleb Williams? Yeah. Remember how before in the beginning of the show we were talking about like, yo, if you're talented, people put up with your shit. Yeah. Hey, man. People are going to start coming out and being like the toenails, the fingernails, the crying on the sideline. You did say it. You did say it. <laughs> but I was defending it. I still, think, I still think he does care. Like to me, fighters cry after fights, win yeah, or yeah. loss. Oh, yeah. well, like I, I get it and I'm cool with it. But I'm yeah. saying now when you're one and two. Mm hmm. And you're playing like shit. Remember, but remember too, the people are gonna come out and criticize you. So and, that's and, why, if and, you want to do these antics, yeah, or if this is your thing, not antics, but if yeah. this is what you want to do, yeah, cool. But you gotta be playing well, bro. And, and the biggest thing too, man, remember Chicago, bro. Like, what city am I playing in? Like certain cities are going to let it ride because they don't live and die for this. They love their team, but certain cities live and die on their team. Chicago's one. That's definitely a city where, and, and then that's also a city that's never really had a quarterback. Jim McMahon, that's, and then uh, freaking um, Cutler. Jay Cutler that, for like two and a half years. Cutler was yeah. probably the best, that was the best quarterback they'd had, truthfully. They just didn't have a defense at that time, really. Mm -hmm. And then Cutler just wasn't, Brandon Marshall would be like, he just wasn't that guy mm -hmm. um, when it came down to it. But like, yeah, man, like, eesh. it's crazy because he has weapons and he is, DJ Moore looks like he is in hell. Yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, we ain't talk about that. DJ Moore look like he is in hell right now. What about Roma Dun Dunze? Yeah. Is, is dad putting out videos of him being open? He did the Odell no, shit. No, oh, that happened. Are you no. I saw someone pick that up. Yeah. Hey, listen. After like week two, he put up like a compilation, not a compilation. It was like one or two plays that yeah, his dad just posted on his naked, social media. Like I'm open. Like, and it's just him being wide open in the yeah. end zone and him missing it. So, yeah, you don't want that. Yeah, you don't not, want that. It's not good. Yeah. Not good. I mean, Keenan Allen coming back might help them quite a bit, but yeah, we'll see. What uh I don't know. I don't know where I left off, but in this economy. In this economy. Okay, in this economy for me is 49 and a half Cardinals and Commanders. Okay. I like that one. I think it's going to be a shootout. The Commanders play pretty much quick and fast and so does Arizona. I like that spot. Um Adriana, I don't know if I gave one out because I know I gave two trust me's and I gave the toxic one. Adriana, I like the Falcons minus one and a half. Mm. They're playing the Saints. They're in Atlanta, back to back home games for Atlanta. I think that is one where I think Atlanta bounces back. Uh, mm. It's it's a ten a.m. game on the on the West Coast, one a.m. one p.m. Pacific, oh, one a, one p.m. Eastern. And then my Ursulita is Miami minus one and a half. Cod is that gross? It is gross, but they're playing the Titans. And to me, that's the one that I'm looking at, and I'm like, ah, this is where maybe Miami can win this game. That that one is actually my, in, in this economy, is Miami. Um, because I know that they have a quarterback situation, but if we can't beat the Titans with the cheetahs that we got on this team, that's how you get fired. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. how, that's how you mess around and get fired. So they, they've got to win that game. They're at home, one and a half. You got to win. It is what it is. 
George, let's run through our plays one time for the social content okay. and for everyone listening. What do you got? Okay, so for my Ursulita, I'm going with the Patriots ten plus ten and a half. For Adriana, I'm going with Buffalo money line and the Vikings money line. For in this economy, uh, Detroit minus three and a half on Monday night football. Uh, you're not going to find an easier way to make money than that. For my toxic one, avoid the Jets minus seven and a half. I'm telling you, they will win, but it's going to be very ugly. And then to round it off, trust me, the Steelers Colts game is going to go under 40. Ursalita, Ursalita for me is Miami minus one and a half. Adriana for me is the Falcons minus one and a half. In this economy is the over 49 and a half in the Arizona Commanders game. The toxic one is the Chiefs minus seven and a half. Two trust me picks were three and oh. I got the Packers minus two and a half. Sorry, George. Mm. And I got the Lions my, minus three and a half. And since it's our show, um, if I go two and oh, I'm going to claim both. But if I go one and one and the Lions is the one win, I'm going to go to 4-0 oh on Trust Me because that's the one that I really trust. And again, this is my show, so I'm going to be able to do what the hell I want, right? That's Lions is the one that's the top priority, but I do also really, really like the Packers. Josh. Uh, Ursulita, I've got uh, minus two Raiders at home. Um, Adriana, minus seven and a half, take the Jets. In this economy, minus one and a half. Dolphins at home, getting back right. Uh, the toxic one, stay away from the Ravens, minus two and a half at home versus the Bills. Um, and trust me, play the Bengals with everything you got, minus three and a half. Let's end the show. Let's build a anytime score touchdown parlay, man. Last week we got close and shit, dude. We Let me see A-Chain walking through the wind one day. <laughs> I'm have to say... Let's go better. one each. Let's go yeah. one each. What do you got? Aaron, I think I know what you have. Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones. Okay. Easiest That's one of the week. Good. Okay. That should be minus 500. He is plus 120. For any time? Any time touchdown, yeah. Disgusting. Yeah. Run the ladder. Ooh, the ladder. Ooh, the, dude. Run the ladder with him, dude. Ladder, we got, we got plus 850 for two touchdowns. And three touchdowns, we got 50 to one. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. All right. 51, Aaron I'm Jones. In. I ran the ladder with Henry. You know what the ladder is? Go ahead. Basically, you get one guy to score one touchdown. Mm -hmm. You'll put maybe one unit, right? Say you put oh, okay. 100 bucks. Okay. Then you bet 50 on him to score two touchdowns. Got it. And then you, you bet 25, 25 on him to score. three. Yeah. Uh, so if he scores one, he, you're, you're profitable. Yeah. If he scores two, you're chilling. Yeah. If he scores three, rent's paid. <laughs> yeah got it so oh that's actually yeah, it's good called the ladder this way you just need one to hit and then you're climbing up the ladder yeah so oh, it's a very cool. popular term in the sports betting space right now i like that one dude G i'm going b john robinson i like it one condom play he's minus 130 but i like it as well give okay. us one uh devin singletary minus 105 I love that pick. um dude i love that pick but that's a thursday one yeah so give me one for sunday Oh, okay, all right. Well, Maybe I was going to say because the Cowboys, the Cowboys have surrendered eight rushing touchdowns. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Surrendered oh, I'm the most, definitely laddering the, the most, the most yeah. rushing touchdowns. If you listen to this early on, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, a lot of ladders are going to be dropped this year. Right? Um, DeAndre Swift plus two hundred anytime touchdown. Um, the Rams have uh, allowed the third most rushing attempts uh, on defense in the league right now. I like this. I like okay, this. and that comes out to. Drum roll. Plus 950. I like that. What was it last week? I think it was like 1250. No, last week was 41 to 1. Oh, yeah, you're right. Plus 4100 because we had Derrick Henry to score two touchdowns. How about this? You want to get a little spicy? Because you know I had this one queued up. I, Dude, I knew when you said before about Aaron Jones, I was like, oh, we might have to throw a nice little double dip on that one. How about this? DeAndre Swift anytime? Yeah, I have that too. We get Bijan Robinson anytime. And how about Aaron Jones, two touchdowns, plus 4,600, 46 to one odds. Wow. Wait, how is it? Oh, for two. Yes, okay, okay, two okay, touchdowns. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I like that one. Wow. So we go Bijan, DeAndre Swift, and Aaron Jones to score two touchdowns. Hey, man, the two touchdowns hit for us last week. That's crazy. Nick toss the the Vikings money line in there because nah, it's the nah, nah. That's conflicting. The week, that's man. conflicting. We can't oh, that's do that. Too, that's too much. But yo, it's, how about this? How yeah. about this? What do you, should we go one touchdown for for the two condom players? Should we go raw like Monday nights and go? No, two no, 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 no. Two two touchdowns. Aaron Jones. He because it, it's any time. Any if it if it was one or the other, I'd be like I don't know. Two touchdowns any time. He's gonna get in that end zone, and he's Lambo leaping. Dude, plus 800 for him to score first. No, no, hey, don't leave that one alone. I might go crazy on this one because I really do like this play. What's the – for him to score the first and the last touchdown? That's always like one of those weird props that you're like, what the fuck? Who ever plays this? It's got to be a George. <laughs> those are crazy, man. Yeah, it's got to be a 100. Those are crazy. First and last? Yeah. Uh, 55 to 1. I thought it'd be more than that. Same. Yeah, no Same. value. Well, yo, can Fifty-five I, to one, no value. Can I there, give? Bro. Can I give people some sort of free game and and something to always dabble in? This is literally what I always always do when I bet anytime touchdown scores. If you noticed, we picked a touchdown score from three different games, mm -hmm. right? So it applies in this scenario. I always throw ten dollars on them to score the first touchdown collectively, all three of them, mm -hmm. because it's separate games. It's a lot more likely, obviously, and you don't have no conflict of interest of, oh, we're, we're taking, oh, 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 we're taking McLaurin and Marvin Harrison. Fuck, we're gonna end up losing that. Someone, bet. someone, yeah. someone going is gonna to score it. To. So yeah. the bet that we made, if you throw ten dollars on Bijan Robinson, Aaron Jones, and DeAndre Swift to score the first touchdown, ten dollars, forty three hundred. Whoa, 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 whoa. The guys that we mentioned to score any time. You play them. I always do this, dude. If you like a guy to score a touchdown, sprinkle a little bit on them to score the first touchdown. And you bet less on it, right? So I always bet our parlay, Josh. I throw $50 on our anytime. I also straight bet them. Mm -hmm. Not for 50 but... And then I always do a $10 parlay for them to score the first touchdowns. Get a little wild. And that was that was Bijan, Aaron, and DeAndre Swift, right? Yeah. Like Aaron Jones, Bijan Robinson, and DeAndre Swift. All to score the first touchdown plus four hundred and twenty four hundred. That's crazy. We'll take those. Let's we'll take it. those odds. Let's it's do it. hitting this week. Josh, it was fun to have you on, bro. Shouts to the commanders. Uh last time I gave you a victory lap last year when they were two and out, right? We freaking fell yeah. off the rails. I jinx those teams, bro. Yeah, you ain't giving me no victory lap, baby. <laughs> it's all right. Like I said, one game at a time. We got the, the Cardinals on Sunday. I will be in the house. I am about 15 rows back. I'm chilling with some of the people's families. So, uh, you know, look, we're going to – it's not going to be a shootout like George says. We're going to win 30 to 18. That's the score. Wow. I'm. It's – Good that you're like 15 rows up. You might be able to see down and see where Kyler Murray is amongst all the men. <laughs> yeah, I'll be able to find him. I'll be able to find him. Yeah. I'll be able to find him. What are you working on and where can people find you? Uh, the American Fan 365, uh, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Um, right now we're we're in a transitional period, but we're but we're still grinding. Still got clips coming out. Um, gonna be doing gonna be doing some things uh, over the next couple of weeks, next month or two. Uh, gonna be doing the uh, the not the Jersey Jam. That's not until March, but um, probably gonna do something with sports moments and then also a sneaker giveaway. So gonna be doing those things over the next couple of months. Probably during probably do the sneaker giveaway during Christmas. Hey man, it reminds me a lot of the transition I had to go through when I was going with podcasting. I used to film the show on my buddy's crib, and then when the show kind of split up, I started filming it in my parents' basement. Got to get it done, man. Yeah, yeah. You're building a fan base, no matter how big of a fan base it might be. It might be 500,000 people. It might be five people. You build a community out. You get free shirts sent to you because they fuck with the show. You get perks. You get to meet people. So you still got to hit your days, man. That's yep. why I say you hit your days. You get a, a Monday night late release for veterans minimum, and then you get a Thursday release. And unless some crazy shit happens, you're going to always get those. So you just got to get shit done. So I fuck with that, though, because a lot of people would just fold. And I oh, yeah. It. No, no. We're not folding. Just, you know, recalibrating. 
We'll do. We'll, I'll probably do something. Uh, probably have an episode next week. We'll do something after uh, after football. The little lives. You better be following them on IG. Yeah. <laughs> the li- the lives have been okay. The lives have been doing pretty good. The one with Tate did uh, had like I know freaking two thousand people on the live. There's something about the Instagram live aesthetic that I'm not gonna lie. It fucking hooks me in. Like I don't I don't know what it is. It's just like. You see, like the little live counter, and then even on clips and stuff, yeah. like when Drewski would do his shit, where he was on live with people, I was like always I just, watching it. I just miss, I just miss my my, my production value. My production value has gone gone hey, down. No, no, I can't I, get my I'm sponsors a, in. Good, it's like Lord, if the mercy. content's good on it, it don't matter how it looks. I've seen shit fucking podcasts that oh. if it's if it's great content, yeah. People, you're like, yeah, it's got twenty five thousand views. The <laughs> fuck is this? <laughs> but, yeah. I can relate, bro. I totally get it, man. I totally get it. George, where can they find you? We out here hustling, people. You better be following all of us at Mr. George Carmona is where you could find me. Uh, Dallas World or uh, Jerry's World this Saturday, Texas A and M. It'll be uh, in the afternoon. Make sure you tune into that, and then uh, next week. I am actually going to be going to Tennessee or Arkansas to watch the Tennessee game. Um, and college game day is more than likely going to oh, be wow. at that game. So I'm gearing up for that. I will. I think that warrants the level of me hiring a camera guy. I've never done it. I've always yeah. done camera shit myself, but I think I'm going to pay somebody and yeah. get some good content well 100 percent. you definitely need it you know what i mean and it'll it'll be great you know um and then also just capturing some of the stuff with uh with you and junior like that's that's yeah that's that's gonna Make be my great. way in the locker room afterwards the the game versus uh a&m is is in dallas it's not at uh tech it's not at um it's not a, in college station no oh yeah. no this is the last oh. year they're playing it at jerry's world Oh, what do you say? Oh no, for or did you want me to go to? I I, wa- it would have been nice to I go. I wanted to, to see the field, twelve, <laughs> but air conditioning, big screen. Oh, it's so nice. Have you it's have you been screen. inside? Have you been inside? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's great. You, you've been there, Giants fan. You went to a Cowboys a game? Giants Cowboys game. No, Nick, I've never on. I've never been to Texas. I was really say, or California. Bro, how? California, we got to change. Bro, we're five minutes from California, it's bro. Nuts. Yeah, in comparison. <laughs> yeah, I just never... Still, so, you, so you haven't been to SoFi or any of those yet? Nah, nah. I'm going to by the end of the year. Oh, come on. All right, we'll, bro, we'll, we'll pick a game. We'll you, pick yeah, a game. you, you got to take Darce to the beach. We'll pick a game. Dude, I've been to Jacksonville Stadium. How's that? Yeah, how, how that happened? I don't I went, know. I went, to the, I went to the Super Bowl when the, the Eagles and Pats played. Oh, that what? That, oh, that's right. When you, when you were going to Super Bowls every year. It was so shitty. That they had to bring cruise ships. I remember house. that. So shout out to Duval, man. Not only did I dump on you for hosting the Super Bowl, I also cursed your team. So <laughs> Duval County represent. Shad Khan is coming for you. <laughs> All things veterans minimum or at veterans minimum. And we'll catch you guys next time. Peace. In his element, I'm a gold medalist, bronze like your medalist. So many deer in headlights, but it's bedtime. Hear that supper bell, main course, beat a venison. Zab, most dangerous game. Either kill or be 